the first of all, the problem is when I run this package, this sample job that I had right here, look at the history that this gives us. Now, as you can see, I've had a few failures here. And looking at the job history, if you're relying on SSIS to do the logging for you, you'll, you'll be disappointed, unfortunately. If you're, sorry, if you're relying on SQL Server Agent to do the logging for you, you're going to be really, really disappointed. So look at the kind of logging it gives us here. One big text block, and we're expected to diagnose what happened inside of this. So looking at this, you'll see, oh, eventually you can kind of decipher that there's a divide by zero error message. But trying to decipher that, and if you have lots and lots of different packages and hundreds of servers, you're going to have some problems. So this is not, a, not the proper way of logging, unfortunately. Uh, in BTS, it worked a little bit better than SSIS. So what we're relying on in SSIS is to do one of three ways of logging. The first way is logging with the built-in providers. Now, those built-in providers can log a few ways, but the main ways you're going to log is either to the text file, which is not really practical when you have hundreds of packages. Uh, you can also log to a SQL Server table. Now, the table that logs to is varies based on the SQL Server version. And the last way we can log is with the Windows event log. Now, this is perfect for things like if you want to hook into Tivoli or MOM or those kind of interfaces. You can, you can log to the Windows event log and have Tivoli or MOM or DAD pick up the, pick up the events from the, from the uh, Windows event log. So let me show you how that first way works and some of the weaknesses behind it. So I've got this simple package here. This does some, some, some random stuff. What it does is really inconsequential what it does. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click into pane here, go to logging. And as you can see, I'm going to turn on logging for the entire package and all its providers. Now I can log to any of these data providers right here. And there's actually, this can be extended as well, by the way. But in my case, I'm going to log to the SQL Server table. When I hit add, I'm going to log to my Adventurer's Connection Manager, check this box, and then over in details, I can specify what type of events do I want to log. Now keep in mind, my goal was to have a central table that I can go into in the morning and find out which packages across my entire enterprise broke. So things like, well, on error, uh, that, that's, that's of course an, ob an obvious one, on post-execute, oops, on post-execute and on pre-execute, we'll execute before a task, container, or package starts, and then after it finishes. On error, of course, is another one as well. But on, at a minimal, you want to do on error, post and pre-execute, and on, also you want to grab things like on warning potentially. It's up to you. On information is way too much information for most people. So most people find that, that on information is just too, too much noise. But, but what is interesting, if you want to monitor the pipeline components, so each, each given ta each given transform and source and destination in the pipeline or in the, at the data flow, you can do on pipeline rows sent, and that gives you some really interesting information that we can use later. So I'm going to hit OK. Now also, one, one thing else, I'm going to hit the advanced button here, and you can see which columns are going to be added. So you'll see here that there's a missing component here that we need to really solve my business problem. All right, so those columns that I have here, first of all, the computer that executed the package and the operator that executed the package, that may be SQL Server agent in most cases. The source name is who is calling this event and its ID. So is it a task, is it a container, or is it a package? One of those three things are usually calling this package. The execution ID is the unique instantiation of the package. If you execute one package five times, you get five execution IDs. And any kind of error text would go in this message text right here. So there's one key thing that's missing. To solve my problem before, I, I really need to have the package name. Now, the package name is here, sort of. The way I would get the package name is through a source ID. So through a source ID or source name, uh, what's going to happen is, let's imagine I've got this package right here that has, okay, this is my package, who has one container, and in red has two tasks. So what I would see is I would see in green here, package starting, container starting, task starting, task starting, and then on the way on the uh, yellow way out or orange way out, uh, task stopping, uh, well task task stopped, task stopped, or container stopped, and then package stopped. So kind of it's a hierarchy here. So you'd have to do this kind of crazy self join, and I have that self join in my blog. Uh, I have a UDF that will kind of do that for you. But you have to kind of do this crazy self-join to kind of derive the package name. 
and you're kind of doing this grouping on execution ID and kind of navigate, navigating up the chain until you hit that. So if I hit OK right now, it's going to create a table. Now the table it creates is really contingent on the on the provider you're using. So is it using 2008? It uses one. 2005 uses another. So let me execute this package. Now we're going to see a whole bunch of stuff happen, but over in my AdventureWorks database, I'll go to my tables, and under my system tables, in 2008, you're going to see this table is called SSIS log, sys SSIS log. So when I run this, we'll see a number of rows. This is just one package execution. So we get a good, a good amount of data here, operator, all those kind of things, the source ID, the execution ID, see this is one execution from here to here. And one of the interesting things I think about this is the pipeline rows set. So you can see here, if I kind of compress it, kind of highlight these uh, rows right here. Let me expand this. And as you can see, it's showing me every step along the way. So this source outputted some rows, 400 and, or 4,012 rows, to this, to, to this, to, uh, this source right here outputted rows to this derived column, you know, et cetera. So this drive column, I'll put it to this flat file input, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's showing you each step along the way how many rows are going from step to step. So as you see, I started with 4,000 rows, and I kept on going, as, as, and rows kind of filtered out as time went on. And we'll see that over here as well. See, 4,000 rows kind of went from here to here to here to here. Okay? So it's showing you how many rows went from this source to this destination, and this source to this destination, et cetera. So that's an interesting kind of thing we can do, but the problem I'm looking at here is the package name. Trying to derive a package name here. This is my package name right here, and I'm seeing package start. So I have to kind of look for that event right here and know it all on that. But I had to do this crazy self-join on these lower events to do that. So that's why I generally use another option. The other option we can use, let me open up my PowerPoint again. Okay my go button here. Here we go. The option I generally use is going to be to create my own logging with event handlers. And this gives you a lot of flexibility. So the first thing, that, well, the reason why I like using an event handler framework, your own management framework, is it gives you complete customizable. You can, you can add, um, you can add a send mail task, you can do email, you can do a, a logging to a table. You, you are the, the architect of this at this point. So it gives you complete flexibility. Now the trade-off with this is it does become a little bit more difficult to deploy. So as you create 50 new packages, you're going to have to copy that framework code that you wrote into all 50 packages. Or imagine you have to modify the packages. If I want to modify my framework in 100 packages, I have to go and touch all those packages. 